Could there be a guardian angel for all of humanity? I think that the guardian angels work in concert. There is a great angelic choir. It is our voices sung through the voices of our guardian angels. Guardian angels look the way that we need them to look. They're just designed in such a way that literally their whole happiness is found in guiding us stronger and better and stronger and better to the experience of absolute infinite love and joy. If it is a soul in a body on planet Earth, it has guardian angels. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you've ever needed help, guidance, or protection in your life, then do we have the Guardian Angel Messages show for you. Today I'll be talking with best-selling author and angel expert Rodley Valentine in this tell-all on guardian angels and how we can communicate with them and get the guidance we need. That plus we'll talk about choosing mom's car, watchers in the night, 444 and 777, and what in the world color samples and a rare colored car has to do with anything. Plus, we'll do an amazing oracle card reading just for you just before the end and a meditation, of course, with Rue. So you'll want to stay tuned. So welcome to the show, Rodley. Are you ready to shine? Let's, let's just bright up the sky, shall we? Woohoo! All right, I can't believe I'm going to go here, but before we dive right into things, do our angels follow us into the bathroom? <laughs> yes. <laughs> they couldn't care less, but I don't I mean I don't think of it like that like that they're like following us everywhere we go per se. I just think they're energetically present and always connected to us. So I don't think about my guys like following me around. I think that they're just energetically present in the space that I'm in. And, and I try not to think about that particular question or any other of the questions that are related that are similar in nature. I just think that they're just always present. And so for me, my guys start to like show up as being like by my side and walking with me when I start talking to them or when, or sometimes when I start fretting or sometimes when I start worrying or something like that, then they'll sort of like give me a little bop up beside the head and go, Hey, rad, stop. We've got this. Usually that's a four, four, four for me. It's like that has mutated in its meaning for me over the years to become very specific instead of the general thing that it means. What does it mean for you? Four, four, four then. Four, four, four has mutated for me from the expansive thing of your angels are with you, which is like, I got that memo. I know that already. Um, to four, four, four for me now means stop worrying about that. Because that's when I show when it shows up for me. That's when the license plate skews in front of me. That's when the clock says four forty four. That's when I buy something that's four dollars and forty four cents. Is when I'm fretting. I am fretting about something. I'm worrying about something. I'm letting it kind of like get a hold of me. And my that's when my angels will be like, "Will you stop? We have got this." And it works. I mean, it's like Xanax. I mean, it's like I immediately stop worrying, right? What I like about that so much, and we're going to do a, a real tell-all today, but what I like about this, and I hold the rooster in my arms and I bounce on the rebounder for an hour in the mornings because there are no hiking trails around here. Or else I'd, I'd take him hiking. And I looked at my watch after I finished this morning and I'm like, I've got to prepare. I've got a book to read. I've got angel messages to go through. Can I get through all of this at the time? And I look at my watch. Oh, look at this, actually. I don't know if you can see that. It's saying two, 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 right as we speak. Hello. And so I looked at it and it said I had 7,444 steps, which to me meant the angels are like, we've got your back. You're cool. And that's exactly what you're talking about as well. Totally. Absolutely. I think that for people who are really like just starting out with that whole angel number concept, that 4-4 four four really does sort of start out with that whole generic thing of, okay, my angels are with me. I And, you know, it's like my husband and, and actually my marketing guru, both of them are just like giddy about 444 because to them, it's like, oh, this means wow, wow, wow. They are really with me and everything's going to be okay. Uh, my marketing guy is just cray cray for four four 
I mean, it's just it's just like it rocks his world. And because it's so important to him, it happens all the time. If we do a Zoom call, the Zoom program code number will end in 444. You can't program that. That just comes. I love angel numbers for people from the standpoint of particularly people who have a hard time uh, with intuitive work at first because it's really great for people who are brainy, nerdy acts. And it's like they can like sort of like grab the whole concept of, oh, well, 777 means I'm on the right path. And 555 means big changes are coming into my life. And so it's really helpful to them as, as, as like a it's like a gateway drug into in, intuitive spirituality uh, to have those numbers for people who are challenged by their their brains getting in the way of work, having a spiritual um, breathing, living life. Thank you. And our business address, which speaks to the energy we're bringing today, is, of course, 444. Uh, and my cell phone number has 444 in the middle of it. Woohoo! All right. We're going to go to when the angels appeared before you. Just a few questions on this. Kind of set the stage. Then we're going to dive into all things guardian angels. If you don't mind me asking, what happened when you were five? I, I was asleep. And um, I woke up in the middle of the night because I heard someone saying, call an ambulance, call an ambulance. And so I got up because I didn't know that voice. And I opened the my window curtains and I looked out and the house across the street was on fire. And my best friend ran out of the house and he was on fire. And um, uh, he did not survive that. Um, the ambulance got lost. Um, my dad, I, I went downstairs to tell my parents, but as a five-year-old and having just seen what I saw, I couldn't speak. And so I was just trying to get the words out of my mouth. And finally I said, Billy needs an ambulance. And my dad was like a lightning bolt out of bed across the street. He perished. And, um, so I wouldn't go back upstairs where my room was for weeks. And um, my mom had been sitting on a secret. So she finally convinced me to go back upstairs and she took me into my bedroom. And again, five years old, not processing, right? So she took me into my bedroom and she said, now I want you to look out the window. And I, so I did. And she's like, now I want you to see that our house doesn't face their house. You could not have seen what you saw. So she's like, you saw something that was like magic. You saw something that was within you. You could not see their house from, from where my window was. And, and then that was, that was where my mom started talking to me. She always loved angels, but she started talking to me about, this is part of who you are. You must never deny this. You must never throw this away. You must always pay attention to it. She, she called it, listen to your gut. So thank you, Mom. So before we go to Guardian Angels, I've got to ask with all the work I do and with the work you do, have you ever been in touch with them? Oh, yeah. I mean, I firmly believe that that voice that I heard when I was five years old was my first verbal thing with Joshua. I really started the connection when I had bought a house with my ex, who I'm still friends with, and very gay thing. I'm still friends with my ex. <laughs> But um, that's a humanity thing. That's awesome. I, I love it. But anyway, and I love it that Lee loves him. So that's great, too. But, you know, it's like we bought this house and I just kept feeling like I was walking into some sort of energy field. I was really getting into angels. I was really getting into this whole process. And I just felt like I would walk into a wall in the middle of the house and throw the laundry into the sky. And so I'm like going, oh, my God, we've bought a haunted house. Fantastic. And so I mentioned this to a very wise friend and she said, so angel boy, why, what makes you think it's something scary? What if it's one of your fine feathered friends? And I was like, oh, okay. So there's this painting called Watchers in the Night and it's the, it's guardian angel. He's got the torch. He's watching over the child. So I walked into my bedroom and I sat down at the edge of the bed and I looked at the painting and I said, so you seem to know me, but I don't know you. Let's start with your name. And he said, Joshua. As clear as I am speaking to you right now, and he doesn't do that very often. Those, these are special occasions, okay? But it's like, it was Joshua. And I just looked at the painting and said, you know what? I think that will do it for today. But then that night, I had this absolutely crystal clear, lucid dream. 
I don't know why. I've never figured this out, but but I was in a shop that sold seashells in Myrtle Beach, California. And I was walking around in the shop and around the corner came Joshua. And it was the sense of having your best friend in the entire world pop out of nowhere when you hadn't seen him. See, now I've got angel bumps. When you haven't seen him in 44 forevers. And we were just hugging each other and laughing and I was crying. And in the dream, somewhere in there, I was like, wait a minute, I'm not dreaming. This is real. And then in most awful of awful things happened, I woke up. <laughs> Because it's like, no, <laughs> and I was like trying to get back to sleep. But yeah, Joshua has been been with me for since that probably was around 1995 or six, where I've been like actively communicating, actively talking to him on a regular basis. Um, and I have a couple others as well. So very, very cool. So let's dive into the guardian angels. But with that said, you were in a seashell shop. And to me, when I think of seashells, and you've probably lived on the coast at one point, we've lived on the coast. I think of putting your ear to a seashell and hearing another world. So in a sense, it makes perfect sense to me that you are now being initiated to hear and have a higher level communication with this other world. I love that, Michael. Thank you. No one's ever said that to me before, and I love it. It's very brilliant. Thank you. So with that said, how many guardian angels? You said there are others. How many guardian angels do we have? I have yet to like sense less than two around anyone. Um, there are people who disagree, and, and there are people who who feel attracted to an angel, a certain kind of angel experience and a certain kind of angel philosophy. Then there are people who feel attracted to a different one and a, and a third one. I feel very strongly that it doesn't matter which one you feel attracted to. It's just that you embrace it. So there are some people um, in the angel world who are like, nope, you've got one and that's it. I really don't like hard rules like that when it comes to spirituality. I think it puts God in a box I resist that. For me, I've never seen less than two. People can have three or four or however many that they need. I personally, when I do my work, I, I experience what I call special project angels that can also be present. And these are these angels, like people call them angels of abundance or angels of romance or angels of health who are here to like help out the team for a while, but they don't stay. They, they move on to the next thing because you've got these guardian angels. I happen to have three. I don't expect any more to show up. They showed up one at a time over the years. And I felt like they were always there the whole time. It's just that I wasn't ready for them to be a material, you know, um, part of my life until the parts of the moments when they showed up. Makes sense that they then reveal themselves to you. With that said, is there one guardian angel that speaks louder than another? And is there one guardian angel that kind of pulls the strings or coordinates with all the special projects, angels, and whoever comes in and comes out? I definitely feel like there's, I call it a primary guardian angel. And I, so I always feel like there's one where the personality comes through the strongest or is the, I call it loudest, where it's, I'm more prone to clairaudient than clairvoyant. I'm actually claircognizant primarily with second, with a little heaping of clairaudient. But I feel like there's one that always sticks out more than the other. And for me, that's definitely Joshua. I've made it my task to make Joshua a superstar. I don't worry about that. There are some people who are like, no, never. Never tell anybody your guardian angels names and I'm like why because why I mean what because once again God in a box you know it's like it doesn't work that way and so I've never shied from mentioning their names but you know even Jarrett is the is very new to me Jarrett's only been in my life for like like five years so, and he showed up and I was kind of like, well, hello, dude, nice to meet you. And he seemed as shocked as I was that I could see him because I was a meditation state for a healing platform. And, and, and he just showed up and I was shocked and he was, he was like, oh my God, he can see me now. And it was like, it was like we were both shocked at the same time because I'll never forget that moment. You know, it's a different moment than Josh. What did he look like? Oh, he's really hot. <laughs> He's 
very handsome. Um, they all three are handsome, but they're in different ways. But he's he's really handsome. And I think that he just showed up that way because it's just like he knew that I would be like, as a gay guy, he, I would be like, oh, how hello. You know, I would be like that with him and he'd get my attention. Um, but guardian angels look the way that we need them to look. If you need your guardian angel to be a sweet grandmotherly type with a halo and the big white wings, then that's what you're going to get. But my personal opinion and some other angel people that I know of is that our guardian angels follow us lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. They're not just with us this one time. They're with us every time. And so their names and their forms morph to match that lifetime and what we're expecting. Beautiful. So let's go from there. Where did they come from if they've been here with us lifetime after lifetime? And did they choose us? That's a really good question because in all my time, I have never asked. Oh, so I, he, did, he didn't even waste a minute. Josh was like, of course I chose you, you did. So it's like, and that's another thing. It's like, I do want to be clear about this. It's like, I grew up feeling very unsafe. It's like the experience I told you about having a father who was not a fun experience, having outed myself at six years old. And having to live with that in Knoxville, Tennessee, in in the late late seventies, I mean, it's like that was all really difficult for me. So, what did I want in the form of a guardian angel? I wanted a big brother to keep me safe. And so, even to this day, Joshua acts like this big brother. He acts like this precocious seventeen year old who's got a five year old brother that he's protecting me. And so, when I say things like Joshua says you're dits, it's like he does talk to me like that because that's what made me feel safe, and that's what still makes me feel safe. Most guardian angel people don't don't speak that way, and don't, and a lot of people wouldn't want to be spoken to that way, especially if they actually had a seventeen year old brother. It's interesting. What I get, what I get, uh, and 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 I do my own channeling and work with with my guardian angels. They've been with us since the beginning of time, and <laughs> they chose us, which means where were they before the beginning of time, and will they ever go anywhere else? My personal spiritual belief system is that we are sparks of the divine. The divine just willed us into existence. That process is continuing. It is not a finite process. It is an infinite process. And so my belief system is that we are breathed into existence and we start this whole incarnation process. And eventually we get done with it. Eventually we feel like, you know what? I really am kind of done with this. And I want to experience returning to the place from which I came, which I want to return to being a part of the divine. We can look at that if that process, if we accept it or not, but that's how I believe it works. And so Joshua could had could have been existed for bazillions of years before Radley was breathed into life and he had another charge. He had somebody else to look after. And then when I decide I'm done, thanks so much, buddies, it's like he'll take a new charge. He's loving this, by the way. He is loving this, Thank that you. you were asking me questions that I hadn't even processed before. Our life in this time and space is so very focused on the moment, you know, and so in my teachings, I'm trying to help people with the moment, you know, I'm trying to help them to like, just make it through. And, and so that's what people care about. It's, you know, it's like people don't ask questions like that in in my classes. They're, they want to know what their guardian angel's name is (laughs) and, and they want to know how to get it. And they want to know how to read cards and they want to know how to have a, 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 a rich spiritual life and they want to know how to manifest. And these are the things that they want. So no one's ever said, but where did they come from? We're kind of doing the, the People Magazine version of things today. Exactly. Totally. Instead of National Geographic. Yeah. Which means that I've got to ask, and this is a question directly for Joshua. Where did Joshua's name came, come from or who gave it to him and what's the significance behind it? He says, I gave it to him. My experience, again, is that guardian angels don't care what you call them. They just don't care. 
that you can call them peanut butter. They don't care. Just call them. Okay. That's, that's all they care. Um, names are like appearances. So to give you an example, let's pretend that there was this amazing woman who lived in the Victorian age, absolutely graceful and elegant and lovely. And she had a guardian angel because she was aware of such things because she was just built that way. And her guardian angel's name was Elizabeth. And she lived her life and her life was beautiful and she did very well. And she went back into the spirit and decided, I need to do a different life. And so this life, she's a truck truck driver named Bert. Okay, (laughs) Bert doesn't want the elegant little guardian angel named Elizabeth. His guardian angel's name is Bubba. He's a brute force. And so they morph. Here's a funny story. It's like, so um, when I became aware of Jarrett the first time, before I ever saw him, before I ever really stuck my finger into the light socket that is Jarrett, someone else told me, do you know you have a third guardian angel? And I'm like, no. And she said, his name's Henri. And I'm like, okay. And so when I finally stuck my finger in the light socket of Jarrett, it's like actively communicating. And he's like, my name is Jarrett. And I'm like, well, why did you let me call you Henri for five years? And he's like, because you just trusted what that other person said instead of listening to yourself. And it's like, he's like, I was just waiting for you to catch up. You know, my guy's names are Joshua, Daniel, and Jarrett. And they're very different. Do they each play their own distinct role? I think they do. I mean, it's like Joshua is just like deep love and support and unconditional love and laughing with me because I love to laugh and I laugh a lot and and making jokes and making fun of me because I rather like being made fun of because that's a turnaround for me because it's like when I was a child and I was being made fun of, it was torture. And so for me to like get to the place where being known, and I don't mean being like known by the world, being known by human beings, being known by my best friends, where that turned that all around for me because being known by the closest people in my life in a way that they can make fun of me made me feel loved. So it got inverted. And so my angels are more than happy to do that. Daniel is very, he's very meticulous. He carries a cane that he doesn't need just for style, just for elegance. He's very elegant. He's always dressed to the nines in white. And he's just very like organized and specific and and to the task. Jarrett is almost like my PR manager in the angelic world. I mean, it's like he came along at a time when my career was going and that's where he really showed up. And it's like he very often has a clipboard. He's like walking around with a clipboard and it's like, I don't think I manage him. I think he manages me. You know, it's like the whole name thing. It's like I'm just always encouraging people. I love to I have a meditation to help people get their guardian angels names. And I really love it if they use that for themselves so that they can have the experience that I had when I met Josh or Jared or Daniel. But it's like some, when people ask me for their guardian angels names now, I just tell them because it's like it's one less barrier to the experience. Would you like to do that meditation? Sure. We absolutely can do that. Woohoo. It goes better if you have a rooster. Do you have? <laughs> I may be able to help you out with that, Rodley. Excellent. That's why I, that goes best that way. With your guardian angels, what do they get out of this? How is this helping their own spiritual journey by being by your side? Because they're built for it. I mean, they're just, I mean, just like the divine created this human experience and otherworldly experiences as well, the, the divine created and this angelic experience. And they're just built for it. They're just designed in such a way that literally their whole happiness is found in guiding us poor, unfortunate souls. 
a Disney reference, but, you know, through this experience where we get stronger and better and stronger and better and stronger and better and closer and closer and closer and closer to the experience of absolute infinite love and joy that we then fall back into. I think they just love it. And angels don't have egos. So it's like they're not they're not in it for what's in it for them. They're in it for what's in it for their charges. It's just the pinnacle of joy for them. You know, there's a I was listening to this the other day because I'm I'm old enough that I used to care about things like this, but I have these old songs and I play them in my car. And one of them is a song by Amy Grant. Amy Grant is a, a, a girl that I grew up listening to. She's a little bit older than me, but she was a Christian singer at the time. And and one of the songs that she wrote that I've always loved is called Better Than a Hallelujah. And Better Than a Hallelujah is a song that talks about how the divine loves more than anything, not just our joy, but our pain. When we are sad or reaching out to divine for reasons for which we are troubled or hurting or desperate, the divine sees that as just a part of the melody, just the part of the beauty, and angel bumps again, just a part of the beautifulness, of the depth of human experience. And that when we reach out to the divine because we're saying, please let me find my dog or please let my baby be okay, the divine finds that just as deeply touching as a church choir singing or a hallelujah. This begets a very interesting question. You use the term... Disney reference, poor, unfortunate souls. So this is kind of a multi-piece question. Do angels ever get bored working for us or embarrassed or humiliated or disappointed or say, I give up, give me a new assignment, God? The answer to all of that is no, 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 no. And one of the saddest things that I remember happening, it was just so specific. And I was in um, um, I was near, I, I was with my publisher. I was doing some filming and I went into a metaphysical bookstore and a girl that was working in the metaphysical bookstore. Um, she asked what I did. And I said, I write about angels. And she said, uh, well, I don't have any, I made them mad and they came, they went away and I told them to go away and they went away and they never came back. That was one of the saddest things that I've ever heard in my entire life, because it, first of all, it's just not true. And her experience of them will return at the point at which she stops being resistant to the experience. And I hope that has happened by now. But they, again, e angels don't have egos and they're tireless. There, there is no tired. They don't get tired and they don't get angry. Only emotion they experience that is in that ilk or that vein is that I do think they get sad when we're sad. I think they get sad when we feel like we are failing or when we feel like we aren't living up to our fullest potential because they see us in the eyes of the divine. They see the brilliant soul. They see the, the unexplainable beauty of who we truly are. They see every last drop of that. And, but we are masked. We came into this, we put on the blindfolds to ourselves. And so our part of our journey is to, is to get the blindfold off during an incarnation where we can literally look in the mirror and go, I see the divine. Let's go back to this, this woman in the shop. And, and both you and I have experienced this. And, and in fact, I'm sure when uh, this goes live, uh, there will be people in the chat room saying, that's how I feel. My angels have forsaken me. You say, until she's no longer resistant to the experience. What I hear beyond that is 
She doesn't feel worthy. She doesn't feel good enough. She doesn't feel deserving. How in the world do we get out of that place to even begin to ask angels for help? Again, I'm going to go to a really old reference. I think it was Saturday Night Live back in the 80s where you have Wayne and Garth on a bed with Madonna saying, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. And, and, and they weren't. I think that things like that, I call it the faith gym. Okay. It's a, it's a term I use in one of my books and it's like, we don't get from the space of walking into a gym and leg pressing 700 pounds. You don't, you don't walk in and start there. You walk in and you start with something very light so that you don't hurt yourself I think that a spiritual, a deeply spiritual experience in any incarnation takes practice. It takes, you have to like start somewhere. And I I always encourage people to start wherever they feel led. It's like, for me, it was angels. For other people, it's astrology. For other people, it's numerology. For other people, it's ascended masters. It's, it's what piques your interest. What when you think about it and you consider yourself in a place of I'm going to commit to learning something, it needs to be something that you immediately have a sense of connection to or even immediately love. It needs to wow you. And so if you're having difficulty making that spiritual connection, maybe you pick angel numbers. We started with that. You know, it's like maybe you pick angel numbers because it's easy. You can start with it from an intellectual standpoint if that's what you need to do because you can't emotionally attach because of the worthiness issue. Fall down the rabbit hole. That's what I tell my students all the time. Fall down the rabbit hole. Well, what you're really saying is that there is a string pulling on each of our hearts. It's our own individual string attached to our own individual note. Play that string, not somebody else's, not Radley's string, not Michael's string, not anybody else's string, and see what pulls you forward based on the note. If Radley is the person that helps you connect with that string, then great. If Kyle Gray is the person who makes you who like really resonates for you, great. If it's Michael Sandler, if it's Laura Dern, it doesn't, Diana Cooper. We're all here. And I I hear this a lot from people. It's like, it's like, yes, are you hearing the same kind of messages from all of these people? You sure are. And do you know why you're hearing the same message? Because this is the message of the time. And there are people who resonate with Michael who may not resonate with Radley at all. And there are people who resonate with Radley who just would not connect with Diana Cooper. I mean, she's lofty. I can't even understand what Diana's talking about. But it's like, she's way up here. It's it's hard for me. But we're all saying the same things because this is the message that's coming from the divine that humankind needs to hear. And so there's a lot of different voices saying similar things, but in different ways, because that's how you get the masses. That's how we heal the planet. A lot of people right now, it's an interesting time. And some people say guardian angels aren't protecting us at this time, or that we need a new guardian angel, or that humanity needs. If we think of humanity as a beingness, as one being, humanity needs a new guardian angel during this time. Why? This is such a weird, loaded question. Why do angels, guardian angels, let us get hurt? Because we have free will, and they cannot mess with that. I tell people all the time, it's because it's like, you need to ask your angels for assistance because if you don't, your angels are shackled, all right? It's like, okay, he's on his little free will blitz and he hasn't asked for my help and there he goes. And I do think our guardian angels can step in to assist us in times of great uh, life-threatening situations. I think that that if it's not our time to go, that they can pop in. I know that happened for me once. We have free will. We are on a path. It is a path that unfortunately very often is ego-driven and and where we are walking with blinders on and we are not staying in tune with the universe at any particular moment. We're not seeing the signs. We're not listening to what the message is that we're getting. We're not looking at our experience and going, I don't like this experience. Why is this experience happening? What is it that I'm being, uh, what, I, what am I trying to learn right now and how can I learn it so that I don't have to experience it anymore? They can't push us through that. We have to do that part, but they can help us. Thank you. So, 
earlier, I was just mentioning, and I'm like, I guess I have to go there because I'm, I'm also talking like this. I look at each of us as individual cells in what I mentioned before is a human beingness. We are all part of this divine oneness of humanity. And as, as spirit, we're infinite in all directions. So if there is this human beingness of which you and I are individual cells in the wholeness, could there be a guardian angel for all of humanity? Some people say that's Michael. Archangel Michael is considered to be, among other things, the archangel that is the main protector of planet Earth. Um, I'm not sure if I think that that's true, and I don't think he thinks that's necessarily true. I think he's he's a part of a team that is much broader than, depending on which discipline you practice, seven archangels, 15 archangels, whatever. He is the rock star. You know, he kind of is the, I mean, I'm a Uriel guy, but Michael is the rock star that people notice. And, um, but I think that the guardian angels work in concert. There is a great, great angelic choir and it is the voices of, it is our voices sung through the voices of our guardian angels. Beautiful, beautiful. So on that note, can we sing a song, can we sing a tune to someone else's guardian angel? Or in our case, we have one of our two babies coming through. Can we connect with her guardian angel or even get the DL from her guardian angel? Yeah, I think you absolutely can. And um, one of the ways that I tell people to do that is to talk to your guardian angels and have your guardian angels talk to their guardian angels. And, and relay back the communication. But I do think, I think that there's a special relationship, at least at first, between parents and the angels of their children, um, because you're guiding them, okay? You're guiding them through the process. And so um, I tell my students that are grown adults that they should not ask nosy questions about other people in, in the readings and stuff like that. But I don't think that that rule counts with kids I think if you're like scared that your seven year old is in some sort of danger, you get a pass. You just get to go straight to your angels and go, tell me what's going on with my kids. You can use cards with your kids. I think once they become of an adult age, that starts to, the, the soul starts to like raise its own barriers, its own blinders. And it gets to be this place where if you're trying to do readings about somebody else, it needs to be a question that is reflected upon yourself, not a nosy question about them. Can we connect with, let's say we're, we're dear friends, which my guess is we're going to be dear friends over time, Rodley. I'm putting it out there now. We're dear friends and something's happening with you. Can I reach out? Can I pick up the angelic bat phone, speak to my guardian angel to speak to your guardian angel to see what's going on or how I can help? So my belief system is, is that if I'm open to it, let's say that over time, I just start to love Michael, okay, desperately. And so that's just what happens because we've become such great friends. Then I think my barriers drop. And so you could do that little relay thing. And my energy is going to be accepting of it. My energy is going to be, sure, let Michael know. But if we don't have that relationship, then I think it's, it's, it's less likely to happen. But how can I help Radley? That you can get an answer to. You might not get the what's going on with Radley, though you already know. But you will get the here's how you could help him. Beautiful. So a couple more interesting questions, and let's dive into a reading here. Can guardian angels fall in love or have romance on the other side? I don't think so. I think that when we are in spirit, the droplet of the soul that is ours, it's like, I think that when I get back to the other side, that if there was someone that I had a romantic relationship who had passed away, we would toss and, and turn and be in this almost ecstatic like joy of, of just spinning around one another. Because I feel like this is getting a little graphic, but I feel like that when we have sex with someone that we are in love with, the ecstasy part of that is that I see you and you see me for who we really are. And we just connected in a way that is actually common on the other side. That's what I think. So 
do I think that if I went to the other side suddenly that I would romp and play with Joshua and Daniel and Jared? I think I would. I don't think it's a romantic thing. And I don't think that they do that because I think that that physical love and romance is a human um, thing. It's a it's a human thing. It's not an angel thing. They are living in the essence of joy and unconditional love. They live in that. The way the human body interact does that is different than they do it. That's what I think. Thank you. So they're living in this place on the other side. And let's say something happens to us and we find ourselves going home. And, and first we may get a life review and then who knows what takes place on the other side. And then maybe we meet before. I've experienced this in, in hypnotherapy. I've experienced this in meditation. We meet before our council of elders, before our next assignment. And, and, and I remember my journey there where I asked for the works and they said, you're not ready for the works. And I'm like, give it to me. And I've had two NDEs and God knows what in his lifetime. I'm like, wait a second. But are our guardian angels present when we make that assignment and do they have input? Okay, so yes, I think they're present when we get there. I think they're present in any kind of uh, incarnation planning. Do they have input? Yeah, I, I'm going to say yes. Daniel's saying yes. But the, he's on his cane. He's leaning on his cane very stylishly. He, he, he's saying Yes, but it's it's not from the standpoint of you're not ready or you don't want to do this. It's more of an input of, okay, now I just want to remind you of your incarnation in 1472. You tried something like this. It didn't go so great. Just you need to be thinking about how are you going to embrace all of that from because that's in you. It's going to be affecting you at a super, super subconscious level. You're going to know it's there even though you don't know it's there. So I think it's like that. I think it's like they're like going, they're asking questions and going, but what what are you really trying to get out of this? And where where are you just trying to get to level eight, 812 of the video game that life is? Is that what you're trying to do? Or So I think there's that kind of interaction, but I don't think that they're saying, you know, there's not the experience of being a human soul because I do not believe that angels are, have ever had a human incarnation because they're just not. I don't I don't really buy that part. Which means they're not our loved ones who've passed on. They're not our pets. They're not anything of the sort. Your guardian angel is not your grandfather. Not to say that your grandfather isn't watching over you very constantly and with deep love and deep concern for what is happening to you. Uh, but your grandfather also has other things to do, um, like planning his next incarnation or his soon to be her incarnation or whatever. Right. I want to get at how we connect with the angels and dive into guardian angel messages to row in just a second. But a last fun question, which is, can our pets have guardian angels? They do. I mean, I totally, I absolutely, totally believe that they do. I, I know that Riley does. I know that Jace did and Raven did. And I know that they do. I think that they're more aware of them in, in their way. I think, I think Riley is aware of her angels. I think that's why you see, and mine is for that matter. I know it's a little bit cliche in the angel community, but I think that's why if you see Rue staring off into space at nothing, he's not seeing nothing. He's seeing something. We have a, a kitty. Her name is the love bug. And the love bug loves to go up in, in our main foyer and up on a, uh, a little coffee machine in front of a, we kind of got it like a coffee bar in front of a giant mirror. And then she watches TV, in quotes. She stares into the mirror and you'll see her eyes dart and dart around and look at other things and go back and go. And she'll stare in it for hours watching things that we do not see. Now, last week I had it and actually she looked and all of a sudden poof, poof, and she turned around and a picture <laughs> knocked off of the wall. She saw the spirit before the picture jumped. I totally believe that. I, I, 
do think that they are watched over. Some people say the guardian angels of animals are fairies, which is a whole other like bag of popcorn to go through. You know, potato, potato, tomato, tomato. You know, they're looked over. Very cool. So let's go from there. I want to talk about ways we can connect with our guardian angel or angels. Actually, let's dive into your beautiful deck. But how often do we want to communicate with our angels? Oh, God, every day, please. I mean, at the very least, when you get up in the morning, at the very least, if you could just say, dear guardian angels, please be with me today in all ways, all things, and all directions of time. Let there be no limit to the ways in which you can assist me today. Just unshackle them. Okay, just start the day that way. Because now they're like, okay, let's get to work. Especially if you're new to it, ask your angels for signs and try to stay awake, okay? Stay awake. That's what we do as human beings. We get up in the morning and we like say, angels give me messages. And then what do we do? We go immediately to sleep. I mean, we get the kids ready. We take them to school. We drive to work. We work all day long. We come home, pick up the kids and, you know, feed them and put them to bed and go, well, my angel sent me no signs today. Now, what actually happened was they walked out of their house, stepped over a white feather, got into their car and turned, the radio was playing, calling all angels. You're not even paying attention. You get to your latte. It's $4 and 44 cents. I mean, it's like there were messages all day long, but we were not awake. You have to stay awake. So make yourself put a post-it note on your dashboard on the dash of your car, put it on your computer, do something and move it around. you got to move the post-it notes around because we as humans will like go, I don't even see that post-it note anymore. But just ask them for signs. And if you can just stay awake and if you can just be open-minded, it's like I asked for signs yesterday from Jason Raven, my dogs who have departed because it's like, when you want Riley to have a sibling, We're asking them to find it. What you just mentioned there, we're asking them. Each and every morning we can wake up and say, angels, guides, guardian angels, please help me to remain awake today. (laughs) Recruit them for everything. Exactly. This is a great prayer, A a, a great thing to request. And just like you, Michael, I notice every thing everything nothing goes unquestioned there's a penny on the ground why is there a penny on the ground what was i just thinking about could it be attached to that what is it's like i question everything and because i do i get the messages and you can't make this stuff up you're also training your mind so we have a book on on automatic writing and so yes yes uh, ah the automatic writing experience so we teach people the technology of hey guys let's do this every single day and build a fiber optic cable that is unbreakable as a practice every single day you have an amazing card deck among other things to make it a daily practice And the more that you do, whatever is your practice of flavor, your practice du jour, the communication, I'm convinced, grows stronger and stronger and stronger still until you and I are having, we're having multiple conversations because I know you and I are communicating here. We're also, because of the prayers we said at the beginning, communicating up here over this bridge, but you're communicating with your guardian angels. I've got my guys going over here on me. Wait, you need to ask And it really enriches everything, doesn't it? Not only does it enrich your experience of making choices that will lead you towards joy, it also makes it all mean something. It reminds you that, because I do use the analogy all the time, this is a video game, okay? It's just a video game. And there's parts of it that are hard and parts of it that are fun. It's which part we're in depends on where we are and what we're trying to embrace or learn or learn our way out of. When I have conversations with my angels, when I'm attached to them, there's a richness to all of it. And there's also faith. I mean, it's one of my favorite words is faith. When you have faith, you can get through just about anything. And even when Jace died, even when Riley was lost, even things that you know about that maybe other people don't know or the people who follow me do know, even then, 
I knew there was a reason. I know there's a reason. There's there's a reason. And if I don't get it, I will get it eventually. It sounds like, and this goes for me as well, and I'm not making light of anything here, faith means remembering this is a video game. Now, some people will say, this is not a game. No, it, it, it is real. It is very real while we're here, but it's also an infinitesimal blimp in the lifetimes of lifetimes that we've been here. We are here to learn and to grow. But if we can detach for a moment and realize there's a spiritual significance to everything, then we're a little bit freer to have that richer experience. I agree. And, and, and another thing about that that I also teach is that not everything is about you. I think sometimes we're playing a part for other people. Sometimes it's like, if you can't figure out why something happened, maybe it didn't happen before you. It happened for your spouse or it happened for a friend or maybe it happened for a stranger. You know, you were, you were the stand-in and there are other people being stand-ins for you. So, Everything happens for a reason, but I always add it doesn't all it isn't all about you. It's brilliant and it can free us so that we're not playing the law of attraction, driving ourselves silly Crazy. game. Yes. <laughs> exactly. So would you mind doing one, maybe two readings, but certainly a reading first for everyone here with your brilliant deck? Um, this is Guardian Angel Messages Tarot Cards. So it is based on the 78-card tarot um, um, system for card readings. But it's designed with Guardian Angels in mind um, um, in very specific ways. So, so you just want one card? Is that what you want? Let's do gently. So I don't, I don't want to rush it, but, but gently, but at a good pace. I want... Three, four, three. So I, I want a past, future, and present. Okay, sure. Did you put future in the middle? Yeah, that's my way of saying it. But I, but let's do past, past, present, future is how you have it in in your book. So let's do past, and that's how almost everybody else does. It's just my way of speaking of how I look at time. Well, nine of fire, all right? So this is a card of resilience. This is a card of how, trying to stay prepared for everything that is going on. This woman is standing here. She's standing in front of all these wands. She has a guardian angel behind her who is hoping to protect her. But what she's trying to protect is she's trying to hold her life together. Okay. She's just trying to hold it all together. She's built all this. It feels like it's under attack. It feels like it's at risk. And so this card is protection, preparedness, and resilience. And so that's a way a lot of people feel over the last two years, right? Is that life is sort of under attack, the stuff that I have created. So present, we have king of fire, inspirational, charismatic, innovative, okay? So this is where the moment where we all are hoping that we are in, where we are finally getting back outside, we are finally taking back control of our lives. So we are finally in this space where, okay, that was tough, but now I'm back in the saddle. Now I'm back in control. I can start to control what I am doing in my life. Now, I would say also they're listening to this broadcast at this particular moment, and this is the present. So hopefully things that Radley has said and hopefully things that Michael have said, it have been inspirational and innovative for them to help them to get where they need to go. So three of fire. All right, this is the good stuff. Goals, expansion, and vision. The ship is coming in, okay? It's coming into port, all right? So we have this opportunity to like finally start to expand, finally start to grow, finally get to go to that next level that we've all been wanting to do for the last two years. Now, what is interesting and, and not a coincidence, there's no such thing as coincidence, all three of these cards are the suit of fire. 
Okay, we didn't we didn't go anywhere else. We stayed in the place of creativity. We stayed in the place of motivation. We stayed in the place of inspiration. We stayed in the place of passion. And that's partially because it's been a passionate last two years and not a fun way. And now we're passionate about it being over. And now we're passionate about what our futures can be now that it is knock on wood, angels, please starting to be over. Where can we go next? Thank you. And then I'm going to go with two more readings, a reading for ourselves and a reading for our baby, Hannah. So um, I, I hope this is not too emotional for you. So the card for the past is release. Um, uh, it's endings. Um, uh, it's in traditional tarot. This is the card that's called death. Yeah, well, we lost her sister in utero, so there you go. Present, she's fine. (laughs) She's fine. She's ace of fire, okay? This is opportunity, creativity, action. She's fine. She is aware of the release card, but she is also aware that she's here and that she's fine, and her parents are there. Um, And May 7th, we have the chariot. So this is the card of success, okay? Willpower, victory, recognition. She's going to get tons of it once she enters this plane. Um, um, is this, this is not your first child, right? No, this is, we've had three miscarriages. So Hannah has doubled back and doubled back. She's here this time, and she's here to stay, and and pulled by unicorns in typical princess style. I love it. Please note, it is not traditional, but I put a girl in my chariot. Very nice. Okay, so there you go. Also, please note that two of these cards were major arcana cards, and major arcana cards are the cards that are like the, the... Pop cards in and and you're wearing purple my major arcana suits are purple okay so you've you've experienced this thing now you get to experience this thank you particularly because as as of two weeks ago there's a heart procedure that she's supposed to be not supposed to be she will be amazing after but still gets to have one she's born so she'll be fine i mean we would not have these cards otherwise Thank you. And then one last reading for Jessica and myself. Ah, okay. So the the first card for you is four of water. Okay. So this is a card that's very distracted. Okay. So life has been very distracted for you guys. I feel like it's probably been a challenge for you not to look at the, did you say three miscarriages? Holy and smokes. <laughs> there are three see, goblets see, there. Instead, see the child that is being offered you. Okay? So you've that's been a little bit difficult. Um, you are awake to it. Okay? You're awake to it. But time is standing still a little bit. Okay? This in traditional tarot is the hanged man. I didn't like that per se. But... This I call this card awakening because that card is about a change in perspective, a way of seeing things that is different than the way we saw it before. It's also selflessness, but it's when time stands still. You'll notice that there is a an hourglass that is laying on its side. So for you guys, May 7th cannot get here fast enough, and it feels like it's dragging. You're ready for it. But I love this. Because I wish I hadn't, th- well, of course I had to put those cards back, but um, yes, here we go. Good. She came right back. So what do we have? This was from the last reading, right? Ace of fire. Ace of f- Aces grow up to be pages. And so your last card is her grown up. So page of fire. So creative and enthusiastic, motivated. This is your guy's This is where you are in the future of like you watch your kid grow up and she's fine and beautiful and strong. Look how strong she is. Would you want to mess with her? I wouldn't. Mm -mm. Not a chance. And we know it. (laughs) And she knows how to use it. And she has her guardian angels with her in the form of that angel, the angel feather that's shining bright right there. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. All right. A few more questions. Let's go get Rue here. So where can people go, Rodley, to find your work, to find your courses and to find out more? You can find me at RadleyValentine.com. Um, also, if you people want to, I have a page of healing meditations that are totally free. They just go to RadleyValentine forward slash heal, RadleyValentine.com forward slash healing. And there's just a bunch of meditations for anxiety, prosperity, healing, abundance, manifesting. They're just free. They can just have them. They can just grab those. Um, uh, I have a school there. I'm on Facebook. Lots of people there following me on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. Um, and my marketing guru is threatening me with TikTok. <laughs> so I guess I'm going to do that. I, I, I know I'm meant to be with the rooster on TikTok. I haven't figured out a way because to film yourself, that's the hard part. But uh, you, you and I can meet on TikTok land at some point okay. here. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> with that said, a few last questions, then I'll go get Rue here for, for a meditation. Where do guardian angels, where do they go? What do they do when we sleep? They watch over us. Because in my, again, this is all Radley. This is the, the universe according to Radley. I think that when we go to sleep, we go back there. It's like our little bodies are dreaming and they're doing, it's doing its stuff. But we, we sneak back over to the other side where we can confer and we can talk to our angels. So when people say, can't I just ask my angels to be with me for the rest of, to help me for the rest of my life and just do it once and never do it again? And my answer to that is no, because you kind of went back and then you came back into this body to wake up in the morning, got to re-unshackle. So that's just the world according to Bradley. But yes, they are watching us at all times. Thank you. And I can't believe I'm going to ask this question. Oh God, let me brace myself. <laughs> Do leaders who create war still have guardian angels? Oh yeah, they do. There's a part of me sometimes, Michael, that wonders if those people are props. Are they even real or are they a prop? It's like the people that we have heart-to-heart -heart connections with or are a, a major part of our life, I think those are real souls. But is it – I mean, let's just use the most obvious one. Was Hitler real or was he a prop? He was obviously a real character creating terrible havoc and horrible things in the plane of existence. But was he a human embedded in a soul – or was he some sort of like ex creation by the souls that were incarnated who wanted, for whatever reason, for the world to experience the darkest moment it has ever seen? Because they needed to grow from that. I know that's a little woo-woo, but if it is a soul in a body on planet Earth, it has guardian angels. I wouldn't have wanted to be their guardian angels. But, you know, if I could tell a brief story, so to the, to the extent this relates, I had a really difficult relationship with my father. It was really awful. After he had passed and I found a therapist that I could just work all this stuff through. And my therapist was Native American because I'm part Native American and I liked her shaman energy and that was just what I wanted. And when she knew the whole story of my dad and the abuse and all the stuff that happened, her response to that was, wow, your dad must have loved you so much to come to earth to play the devil so that you could become the angel that you became. That was instant healing for me, for my me and my dad. I literally flew home, stood next to his grave and said, dude, we're cold. But I sometimes wonder if those people who do these terrible, awful things that we can't understand are here to play terrible, awful people so that we can grow. That's my best guess is that many of them, and this is treading on dangerous ice here, and I am not making light. And the amount of prayers that I have going over right now to Russia, to Ukraine, to the leaders, to everyone, everyone is, I try to remember each minute. I don't succeed, but I keep trying to remember each minute. But with that said, if some of the parties involved are actually 
older souls, ascendant masters, here to who create a wrecking ball to help us to evolve and to get out of, you showed a card earlier of the hangman, to get out of a place of being stuck and help us in our evolutionary growth. And I say that with all due respect to anyone or anything with this going on right now. It's thin ice. And I don't know for a fact, except that I do believe even if they are here and they're just terrible people this lifetime, they still got guardian angels. If there's a soul in the body, there's a guardian angel, period. Are they listening? Probably not. But that's what I think. But I also muse in my mind if that isn't what's going on. Thank you. Is there a best prayer that you have for us calling in our guardian angel? And do we ever have to worry that something else is going to sneak in and pretend to be our guardian angel? I don't believe you can get past your guardian angels. I don't. If, if we're communing with our angels, I don't believe you. Nothing, nothing can get past that. I mean, if you're worried about it, Archangel Michael is the great guardian of everything, safety and protection. Bring him in first if you want. But I just don't believe that stuff sneaks in. I know people believe that, but I don't believe that stuff sneaks in when we are specifically calling upon the divine and the angels. I just don't think it happens. I just don't. So that's that. Again, my prayer every morning is, dear guardian angels, please be with me today in all ways, all things, in all directions of time. Let there be no limit to the ways in which you can assist me today. Woohoo! Any last words of wisdom for or from the guardian angels before I go grab Rue and we do a quick meditation? Just try it. What do you got to lose? Nothing. What do you got to gain? A whole lot of happy. Woohoo! Be right back. <laughs> this is Rue. Oh my God, he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he's beautiful. You hear that, good boy? You oh, are. Goodness. You are. Oh, <laughs> he loves joining me for meditations and holding space. Sometimes gets a little energized by them, but loves it. And he is, he goes with me just about everywhere. Oh. He's beautiful. He's wonderful. You're a lucky little bird. You know that? You hear that, good boy? You're very lucky. You hear that? Oh, yeah. It's like, no, they're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's probably rooster speak. And and I can see it. There we go. <laughs> yeah, see, he agreed. <laughs> exactly. Totally and completely. So would you mind leading us in a meditation where we can help um, find the names of our guardian angels? Okay, so we're just going to take a moment and we're going to like get in alignment with our breath. And we're just going to take a breath in and a breath out. And a breath in, and a breath out, and a breath in, and breath out. And we're going to start by asking Archangel Michael, whose name means he who is like God, to be with us in this moment. Archangel Michael comes in a beautiful sapphire blue light. And he uses that light to encompass us in a beautiful sapphire ball of blue light that keeps us safe, that keeps us protected, that keeps us grounded, that helps support us in our connection to connecting with our guardian angels because it allows us to feel safe in doing so. Nothing else other than your angels can penetrate this particular ball of light. You are in perfect safety in this moment in this space, in this place. And so we ask Archangel Michael, as he stands to the side to watch over this, we ask for the first of your guardian angels to become present. This, you're going to have a sense. Just stay in a place of nothingness and openness and allow that energy to come in Allow yourself to become aware of what you feel, see, hear, or know to be present. Just take another breath in and a breath out. And 
And so you can allow yourself in this moment to connect to that energy. And you may feel that energy to feel a masculine presence. You may feel that energy to be a feminine presence. Maybe that energy feels like a blend of this of the two or something different altogether. If you have a sense of male, perhaps you have a sense of a blue light. If you have a sense of female, perhaps you have a presence of pink light. Maybe it is something lavender in between. So allow yourself to focus on that sense of gender and that sense of color. And just tune into that for a moment. And now we're going to ask this particular guardian angel what name they wish to be called by in this present, in this incarnation. Do not judge this. You cannot get it wrong. You cannot somehow make a mistake. Just allow yourself to settle into the connection with the presence and the color and allow a name to come forth. It's whatever came to your mind immediately, whatever came to your mind in that moment, Again, you cannot get it wrong. Do not judge the experience. Merely allow whatever name just comes up. That is the name that you take. So using that name, say hello to your guardian angel. And using your name, they will say hello back. And in this moment, they have something else that they would like to tell you. Again, do not judge the experience. Do not push. Just listen. Just allow. It might be one word. It might be a sentence. Allow that message to come through. And now we ask your guardian angel to give you signs over the next 48 hours that you got the message right, that you got the name right. If you got the name of Joshua, that you will see the name Joshua show up over and over and over again over the next 48 hours. Allow your angels to provide you clues like white feathers and pennies on the ground, the numbers 444, rainbows, any of these things that represent signs from the angels as verification that you got the name correctly and you got the message correctly. And be aware that there are other guardian angels in your life. You can play this meditation a second time or a third time to either get names of other guardian angels and messages from them or further messages from the guardian angels you've already experienced. You can use this meditation over and over again. It is always there for you. And knowing that your guardian angel is at your side, knowing that they have their hand on your shoulders, we start to come back into the aware of the illusion of this experience that is life. You might start to rub your hands together or move your feet and start to come back into the feeling of your body. And when you are ready, you can open your eyes. I hope that does that mean and so it is in 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 rooster absolutely very very content with that meditation very very content right room oh yeah oh yeah he grooved on that one i got a special message from my guardian angel maximilian oh 
Good you know, name. A whole movie where he appeared. He appeared in the form of a lion、um, to show me about strength and power. A mountain lion jumped up behind us at our home in Basalt a couple years ago. We caught it on video. It's kind of cool.、Um, but he was saying that a house will appear for us because we have stayed down here for、um, delivery and, and surgery, and then we don't know where we're going. And we can't see beyond this event horizon because we're not allowed to because we don't know what's coming next. And so he's saying it's going to be all right. A home will present itself. So, <sighs> Rodley, this has been beautiful. This has been wonderful. The superlatives don't even begin to cover it. This has been amazing. Thank you. I've enjoyed it too. It was lovely to get to know you. It it so goes both ways. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, "Be well, have fun, get guardian angel messages to row, and begin plugging into your guardian angels today, and above and beyond all else, shine bright." Woohoo! This was the angel interview we needed. I don't know about you, it's the angel interview I needed. On that note, if you want to communicate with angels, of course there is Guardian Angel Messages Tarot with Radley, and there is also automatic writing. You can go to automaticwriting.com. That's right, Rue, and learn the entire automatic writing experience plus live classes with me. Again, automaticwriting.com. You can also learn how to become a mystic, how to live on both sides of the veil. At the same time, come join us for our School of Mystics every Wednesday, four Wednesdays a month. InspireNationUniversity.com. You also get the Join button down below, where you can get lots of behind-the-scenes goodness, videos, videos with Rue, videos with me, videos about everything going on in our lives and our learnings with the angels, with spirit, with energy. As we're going through this, that's the Mystic Circle. Click the Join button down below that, and then be sure to click the Subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of upcoming shows, premieres, and live events every Monday night with me. Here's a link to the next amazing video. Love you guys so so much. Do catch us on iTunes, Spotify, and everywhere. And above and beyond all else, shine bright. Woohoo! How does it get any better than this, Rue? How does it get any better than this?